What's up, guys? This is Sean and welcome to another episode of the Eheng Podcast. And today we will answer a question from Yasmin. This is from Instagram. Hi, good morning, Sean. Thank you very much for all the amazing videos. Really helps to guide us to buy our first property. However, I have a question that I can't find the answer. We are looking for properties around Malawati. We went to check out the Upper View project. Loved the location, but we were told that there are few units of Rumah Selangorku in the same project. We'll be sharing the same lift and facilities, but houses, Rumah Selangorku and main building are separated by different main doors using the SX card from the lift. Is there anything I should be concerned of? What's your opinion on this? Thank you very much and have a good weekend. An absolute brilliant question, Jasmine. Thank you very much. And just to put everyone in the same page, right? Roma Slangor Ku is an initiative by the state government of Slangor in providing affordable housing. So that's the same where Roma Weep is. So Roma Weep is residency wilaya where the KL government then wants to do something as well. Then you also have Prima. Then you also have PPA1M. Then you also have others. So all are somewhat in the same direction, but different administrators. And how do these administrators of all government agencies, right, put out affordable properties into the market? They kind of impose them onto developers. So something about developments, right? A developer, for example, me, in this case, I get a piece of land. I were to build something. These kind of guidelines differ times to time. Some restricts to the number of units. For example, if I were to build four units of the free market product, I need to provide one low cost unit. I need to build it somewhere. Then if my project, let's say is a 1000 units, I need to provide 250 units of low cost somewhere. And I can choose to build it myself or I can just contribute in terms of cash. So it means I'll need to pay up all this money before I can build this product. And that's one of the main reasons why our properties are getting more and more expensive uh, because of all this burden that the government is trying to impose on them. Not only that, they need to pay this thing called ISF. So it's a fund to improve the infrastructure. So if I were to build this 1,000 units project, right, the roads need to be widened, there needs to be more traffic lights, there needs to be a lot of people servicing the roads, right? So all this comes from that particular fund. Hence, development overall is a very, very challenging thing to do. Lah. And I really foresee there's going to be less and less property developers because the amount of cash to start the business has really greatly increased and increased. So that's good and bad to that. We'll talk about that another separate time. Coming back to Rumah Selangorku, how the government agency imposed is that, okay, now instead of building low cost, now we have this new thing called Rumah Selangorku. And again, we will reach to another two parts. One is a welfare approach. One is a capitalist approach. From a welfare approach, I would want to build the community or build up the social and community part of the people. Hence, I think there will be some experts in the agencies to tell that, hey, what if we were to build in the same building, right? So block A and block B, one is Rumah Selangorku, one is the open free market one, and they share and stay together because this will improve the mindset of people who are less fortunate, which means, right, for people who buy the Rumah Selangorku and then by mixing people who can afford the open market product, they will feel more inspired, then they will actually gradually move up into the social rankings and etc. But then from a capitalist point of view, right, I'm paying 600,000 for people who are paying 280,000 and we share the same stuff. Does it make sense? Right? So that's the main debate. And I guess there's no right or wrong one because as a government body, it's their role to try to improve the Kido Ban Rang Yet, right? The well being of the people. If it's all for money, right? Then might as well they just become developers. Lah. Because the truth is, as a capitalist, of course, I will not want to share my premium product with people who is paying half of it. But we are actually seeing a few cases already. Out of my head now is a Casa Green in Bukit Jalil, where actually half of it is open market, half of it is social housing. It seems fine. Then another one is a residency days. Wangsa Mas and Hamilton is in the same building, but they do not share the access nor the facilities. But then the entrance still feel congested. Lah. Same one. Ma. So if you were to put an extreme, Two things, right? Imagine if all condos will just continue to be luxurious and luxurious and luxurious, and these developers do not mind 
to pay up to build up more low cost and affordable houses and things like that and the difference between these right are getting widened and widened they will no longer be a median class in this country and the median class for this country is the one that is contributing the most tax to the country because one they will use their company la, their corporate la, their innovative accounting to not pay as much one will not have any money to pay tax at all because all will fall below the bracket that's one unfortunate truth la, because like if you look into the income bracket of Malaysia, if you're earning 12,000 in your household, right, you're already in a T20 bracket of the country, which means Malaysian as a whole, you are already in the top 20% income earners really. But what people don't really go into is the top 20, right? 12,000 monthly income, right, is like nothing compared to the top, top. I've seen people like earn six figures per month and that's going to continue to grow. So what the government is trying to do now is to merge hoping that this will actually solve the median class problem right by merging them together then somewhat it will solve this social issue so as a buyer what do i need to look out for basically they are still people uh, and the developers will try to differentiate things so it means right whatever specs in the rumah slangoku will not and will never be the same as per open market ones so that's one number two access so there's a limited access already i think it's okay just that the management that is formed right the jmb that will be formed i'm not sure whether there will be a certain segregation of common areas because if you were to look into the share units of different products is the distribution fair that's the most common debates in this kind of products lah. and in my opinion right a very honest one do you think everyone who buy the Roma Slang or cool or poor one man? a lot of rich people buy one so to me I don't think that's an issue at all without proper enforcement by the government agencies right rich people are just going to continue buying affordable houses and those who cannot afford right will just continue to slack and uh, really just curse on them lah. so my answer to your question is to maximize my profit to maximize my investment I will not choose a product that has rumors laying on go inside lah. that's the truth but if i have no choice and my investment budget is only so much i can only afford this it contributes to in solving a social issue i think it's fine lah. because you look into prices of the projects that i've mentioned the open market one not really affected anyway and i think the developers will be more concerned on this because they will want to make sure and give you that proper confidence in investing in their open market one month if not they will not make money on the rumors slang or cool right they will never make money out of it one it's barely just making up for the cost only and with that i hope this answers your question thank you very much for the very sophisticated question uh, and for those who still have any questions regarding real estate, do just email me at T-A-N-I-H-E-R-N-G T-A-N-I-H-E-R-N-G at gmail.com Or you can just DM me on Instagram, I-H-E-R-N-G And I'll see you on the next one. Ciao!